Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is tactic time yet again on the channel. The amazing GYR has come back with his second tactical release of the FM23 game cycle so far. He's already put out a 4-3-3 called Dynamite, which you can go and check out. But today, this is his 4-2-3-1 with defensive midfielders, which he has titled Loki. So let's dive into the game and take a look at this tactic so we are in game here with yeovil town yeovil are one of the clubs that we did test this tactic with uh, but there is a few things i do want to point out before we dive into breaking this down obviously here is the shape it is a 4-2-3-1 but as i mentioned we've got two defensive midfielders here now gyr a very shrewd operator in the world of football manager noticed something that the game was actually suggesting to him for this tactic. He was trying to put together a traditional 4-2-3-1 with two central midfielders, but then spotted something. Obviously, we've got Loki loaded in here, but if we go to create a new tactic just here, it, let's say you wanted to play Gegenpress, right? And you wanted to choose a formation. The 4-2-3-1 is there, but it is saying to use defensive midfielders. In this instance, a roaming playmaker and a ball-winning midfielder. Okay, interesting. What if you wanted to do a different tactical style? Let's say Tiki Taka, that's here as well. If we choose this formation again, the 4-2-3-1 is present. But if we click on it, again, it's with defensive midfielders. This time a deep line playmaker on support and a defensive midfielder on defend. If we wanted to do another different style, let's say a fluid counter-attack potentially, which the game is suggesting is actually suited to this Yeovil team, we choose formation and the 4-2-3-1 is there for a third time again with defensive midfielders instead of central midfielders this time a defensive midfielder on defend duty and a ball winning midfielder also on defensive duty now this is very very interesting and prompted gareth to change his thinking and put two defensive midfielders in this tactic now we will talk about how we tested this. We didn't test this in abundance. We tested this with two teams. Obviously, I'll talk about Yeovil in a second. But we also tested this with Real Madrid. And I know what you guys are thinking. It's Real Madrid. Hence why we tested it with Yeovil. Uh, but Madrid went absolutely everything. Every single trophy. A very impressive Champions League final victory against PSG. Karim Benzema hit in the back of the net four times. Absolutely, absolutely ludicrous. And even more impressive than winning every single trophy on offer it went unbeaten in La Liga. Now, I, t I can assure you, tactics hardly go unbeaten in FM23. We've all seen how the match engine has been playing out in certain instances uh, with defenders just standing still like statues. Um, so an unbeaten season, yes, it's Real Madrid, is vastly impressive. Don't forget they have to play teams like Barcelona and stuff like that. So if we dive back into the simulation that we did with Yeovil Town, you can see Yeovil are, of course, in the National League. And they did go on to win the National League in this simulation. We also won the FA Trophy as well and got to the third round of the Emirates FA Cup, uh, where we were unfortunately bested by Manchester United. And obviously, 3-0 at Old Trafford, not the end of the world for a team in the National League. That gulf between National League and Premier League no tactics going to be able to overcome that. Um, so in terms of the league, we did win the division. Uh, 12 points clear of Gateshead and Wrexham, who did finish in second and third, respectively, uh, on the same level of points. 98 points for us all season. 30 victories, 8 draws, 8 defeats, and that plus 49 goal difference. If we expand this one a little bit, uh, going to the stages and going to the league table, you can see here 103 goals scored, 4 and 54 goals conceded, uh, giving us that plus 49 goal difference there. So absolutely clear at the top of the division. And what makes this so impressive, we've gone to the season preview all the way down in 22nd. Yeovil Town were predicted to finish 22nd and they've gone all the way to the title. Odds of 33 to 1. I would have loved to have had a bet on that. I'm sure you guys would have as well. Um, so absolutely crushing it with Yeovil Town. Obviously in this FA Trophy final, if we go all the way back to the competition tab they managed to defeat Notts County 2-0 in that final relatively impressive uh, in that one as well but what makes this even better is if we go into the data hub I wanted to talk to you guys about the data hub I've pre-prepared some reports obviously they're nothing special but these are the ones that I wanted to speak to you about obviously we've got the general performance which is on screen right now scoring an average of 2.4 uh, 2.24 goals a game uh, the expected goals for this is 2.1 so it's doing pretty well but the expected goals against are 0.92 and they are actually conceding a little bit more 1.17 so this actually 
gives me a little bit of an indication that the team needs to improve a little bit in defensive areas in terms of personnel not in terms of the tactic um but also something else i wanted to touch on is this xg table this is definitely um a report that i've been paying much more attention to in this year's iteration of football manager as you can see, in terms of expected goals, we are outperforming our expected goals by six, which over the course of a season isn't too bad. As you can see, some of these other teams are doing much more uh, in terms of that. Notts County at 20 overperforming is kind of what you would expect. Um, and then we've got, uh, so even if we take that six off, we're still very far clear of Chesterfield in second. But the expected goals against, we are underperforming by 11 goals. The game actually expected us to concede 11 goals less than we did, which again will put us even further clear. We're overperforming in terms of our expected points as well but that's only by plus four even if you take that four away we're still so far clear at the top of the division it doesn't really matter in terms of the team attacking as well we're getting off a number a high number of shots per game obviously correlating to the good number of expected goals um, and other than that we're doing pretty well pass completion ratio of just under 74 percent we are scoring a high high number of goals per 90 minutes so now it's time to break down this tactic and i will ask before we do that if you could please drop a like on today's video it really does help the channel out and consider subscribing if you are new around here and also please do go and check gyr that uh, out his uh, links will be down in the description as always on these tactics videos uh, alongside a download link if you are on pc or on mac but this is the gyr uh, low-key tactic the 4-2-3-1 with central defensive midfielders and it looks a little bit like this so in goal we have a sweeper keeper on support i will go through guys and give you all the additional instructions to that we will go down and break it through uh, now but this is a sweeper keeper on support with no additional instructions on this guy we've got a right back which is a wing back on attack with the additional instructions of shoot less often and sit narrower you can see which ones of these guys are the additionals uh, they have the white cog and the red circle next to it so you can go and add those in you just add them by going to the edit button here and you can see sit narrower is selected here and shoot less often is selected just there we also have the same on the left back guys so that is again a wing back on attack uh, with the same instructions of shoot less often uh, and sit narrower then we have two ball playing defenders next to each other um, in the center back roles um, with both having shoot less often added to them obviously we don't want these defenders taking those shooting opportunities we want them to fall to the guys at the top of the pitch into the defensive midfielders then we have a segundo volante let me know as well down in the comment section how many of you have actually used a segundo volante before but i think it's quite a nice role especially Especially this year with the runners from deep and stuff like that all the additional instructions on this one is a segundo volante on support with the additional instruction of move into channels alongside him in a defensive midfield role we have the roaming playmaker with the additional instructions of dribble more and shoot less often obviously it already comes with take more risks and roam from position Moving into that final third of the pitch, then on the right-hand side, we have an inverted winger on attack function. Take more risks, shoot less often. Again, we want these chances to fall to the teams, at the, uh, the players at the top and not necessarily those half chances out on the flanks and stuff like that where players opt to shoot. On the left-hand side, we have an inside forward on attack duty. Shoot less often, sit narrower and tackle harder are the additional instructions on him. In the center, we have an advanced playmaker on attack, more direct passes and get further forward on him, sitting just behind the center forward, who is an advanced forward on this particular instance. Take more risks, dribble more and shoot less often. Now, I know shoot less often seems a bit silly on an advanced forward. Believe me, it works. They take higher percentage chances. It makes more sense. In terms of the tactical style and the mentality, guys, you can just do custom slate. Ultimately, it will come out looking the same. Uh, but this tactical style is, of course, from the amazing GYR. Uh, in terms of the mentality, we have a positive mentality. In possession, this is how we are looking, guys. An attacking width of fairly wide. We are also having a shorter passing directness. We are also playing at a higher tempo. Low crosses in that final third. And we are working the ball into the box in terms of in transition this is how we are looking we are counter pressing when the possession has been lost we are countering when the ball has been won we're distributing the ball to the fullbacks and we are throwing it long 
to them as well. Out of possession, this is how we are looking. It is a high press, a high line of engagement uh, with a standard defensive line. We are triggering the press much more often and preventing that short goalkeeper distribution alongside getting stuck in in terms of our tackling. Now, I've noticed with some of these GYR tactics, uh, a lot of people have been saying in the comment section, um, Steve, we're getting a lot of bookings. If you are noticing that, turn this off. Um, it's just a way of negating the uh, the bookings just that little bit. This is the tactic though, a 4-2-3-1 with defensive midfielders. Let me know down in the comment section if you are going to use this for your save moving forward. And as I said, please do go and check out GYR. He is amazing. His tactics are unbelievable. You know it. I know it. The FM community knows it. If you do want to check out his tactic, the 4-3-3 Dynamite though, guys, do go and check out this video that's going to pop up right here.